हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून और गुड इवनिंग वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल हेमरो ज्ञान विज्ञान माई सेल्फ पोटलो योर फ्रेंड एंड प्रकाश फ्रेंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल लाइक इट एंड शेयर इट टू योर मैक्सिमम फ्रेंड्स सर्कल और नीडी फ्रेंड्स थ्रू योर व्हाट्सएप फेसबुक और एनी सोशल मीडिया वी शैल लर्न अबाउट समरी एंड सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स ऑफ अ लेटर टू गॉड from subject english for class 10 students the author of the story a letter to god is gl fuentes he was one of the greatest writers of that time he was a mexican poet novelist and also a journalist the story revolves around the idea of having unquestionable faith in god a letter to god summary in english lencho was a dedicated farmer he was expecting a decent harvest However, to his grief, a hailstorm came and destroyed his harvest completely. Lencho was very sad. However, he had a strong belief in God. He was certain that God would help him. Also, he was an extremely straightforward man. Although working for a long time on the farm, he knew writing. Thus, he composed a letter to God. In the letter, he asked God to send him 100 pesos. At that point he went to the post office and put his letter into the post box the postman removed the letter from the letter box he read the address on it and laughed very much also he rushed to the postmaster and demonstrated to him that strange letter moreover the postmaster also laughed in the same way when he saw the address of god however on reading the letter he got very serious He lauded this man who had unquestioned faith in God and decided to help him in terms of money. He asked the employees of the post office to give charity. Moreover, he gave a part of of his salary too. However, they were able to collect only a little more than 50 pesos as requested for by Lencho. The postmaster put the money in an envelope. It was addressed to Lencho. On Sunday, Lencho once again came to the post office. He asked if there was a letter for him. The postmaster took out the letter and handed it to Lencho. Lencho was not surprised after seeing the money. But when he counted the money, he became angry on God. He was sure that God could not have made a mistake. He took paper and ink and wrote one more letter to God. Then he put it into the letter box. After Lencho had left the place, the postmaster and the employees read the letter. In it Lencho had complained to God that he had received only 70 pesos also he requested God to send him the rest of the money this time however he asked God not to send the money through the mail he wrote that the post office employees were a bunch of crooks and thus might have stolen the money conclusion of a letter to God we learned that faith has the power to give us what we want to fulfill our needs however one must realize that humanity still prevails some important questions solved from this chapter question 1 what did lencho hope for answer lencho hoped for a good rain as it was much needed for a good harvest question 2 why did lencho see the raindrops were like new coins answer lencho compared the raindrops with new coins because they were promising him a good harvest resulting in more prosperity Question 3 How did the rain change What happened to Lencho's fields Answer The rain changed into hailstones as a strong wind began to blow and huge hailstones began to fall along with the rain All the crops in Lencho's field got destroyed because of the weather conditions Question 4 What were Lencho's feelings when the hail stopped Answer Lencho was filled with grief after the hail stopped as everything was ruined and there was nothing that he could feed his family with. He could see a bleak future for him and his family. Question 5 Who or what did Lencho have faith in? What did he do? Answer Lencho had firm faith in God. He believed that God sees everything even what is deep in one's conscience and help everyone in one's problems. He wrote a letter to God demanding him a hundred pesos to sow his field again. Question six: 
Who read the letter? Answer. Postmaster read the letter. Question 7. What did the postmaster do after reading a letter? Answer. The postmaster laughed when he read Lencho's letter, but soon he became serious and was moved by the writer's faith in God. He didn't want to shake Lencho's faith. So, he decided to collect money and send it to Lencho on behalf of God. Question 8. Was Lencho surprised to find a letter for him with money in it? Answer. Lencho was not surprised to find a letter with money from God as he believed that God will help him. Question 9. What made Lencho angry? Answer. There were only 70 pesos in the envelope whereas Lencho had demanded a hundred pesos. The difference in the amount made him angry. Question 10. Who does Lencho have complete faith in? Which sentences in the story tell you this? Answer. Lencho has complete faith in God as he is instructed that God knows everything and helps us in our problems. There are few sentences which show this. But in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary house in the middle of the valley, there was a single hope help from God. All through the night, Lencho thought only of his one hope, the help of God, whose eyes, as he had been instructed, see everything, even what is deep in one's conscience. God, he wrote, if you don't help me, my family and I will go hungry this year. He wrote to God on the envelope, put the letter inside and still troubled, went to town. God could not have made a mistake, nor could he have denied Lencho what he had requested. Question 11. Why does the postmaster send money to Lencho? Why does he sign the letter God? Answer. The postmaster sends money to Lencho in order to keep. Lencho's faith in God alive and firm as he was completely moved by it. When postmaster reads the letter of Lencho to God, he becomes serious, and does not want to shake his faith and decides to answer the letter. He gathers money with the help of his post office employees and friends on behalf of God and signs, the letter God so that Lencho's faith does not get shaken. Question 12. Did Lencho try to find out who had sent the money to him? Why or why not? Answer. Lencho did not try to find out who had sent the money to him because he never suspected the presence of God and had complete faith in God. He could not believe that it could be anybody else other than him who would send him the money. His faith in God was so strong that he believed that he had sent money to him for his help in his problem. Thank you. Hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back to our channel. Hamro Gyan Vigyan. Myself Potlu. Your friend. And Prakash friend. Please subscribe my channel, like it and share it to your maximum friends circle or needy friends through your WhatsApp, Facebook or any social media. We shall learn about. Nelson Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom. By Nelson Mandela. Summary and some important questions from this prose. From Subject English. For Class 10 students. You must learn this prose from your textbook. Let's start its summary. Along to Freedom, by Nelson Mandela is all about the struggle of freedom of South Africa. On May 10, 1994, Nelson Mandela has taken the vow as the first black president of South Africa. And therefore it was becoming a newborn democratic country. Nelson Mandela took the oath as the first black president. Many dignitaries from different countries had come to be part of the most significant day. In his speech, Mandela thanked all those dignitaries. Mandela assured his countrymen that his country would never ever experience the same suppression of one by another. Democracy had been established in South Africa and as a result, a government of no discrimination was established. The people of South Africa sang two national anthems as a symbol of that day. Mandela recalled that the reason for this movement was that black-skinned people were exploited by the white people. He said that this type of suppression of people of South Africa is the origin of many stars. People must learn to hate first, because if they hate, then they can be taught to love, as love comes from the opposite circumstances. 
He also says that a brave man is not that who does not feel afraid but who conquers it. In life, a man has two major obligations. First, towards his family, to his parents, to his wife, and to his children, and second on the other hand, obligation towards his country, people and the community. Everyone fulfills his duty as per his inclination and interest. But it was very tough to fulfill in a country like South Africa. When Mandela became an adult, then he understood that his freedom was only an illusion. In fact, he was the slave of exploitation. He also understood that not only he was a slave, but his other family members were also. According to him, freedom is also mandatory for them who were suppressing others in the past. They also have the right to have it because snatcher of others' freedom is a prisoner of the same. Thus, the oppressor is as much a prisoner as the oppressed. The oppressor too is not free. Conclusion of Nelson Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom The brave man is not the one who does not feel afraid, but he is the one who conquers that fear. Mandela said that every man has his duties towards his country and community too. Hello, some important questions and its solution from Nelson Mandela. Question 1. Where did the ceremonies take place? Can you name any public buildings in India that are made of sandstones? Answer. The ceremonies took place in the campus of the Union Building of Pretoria, which were attended by dignitaries and leaders of many nations. In India, Rashtrapati Bhavan and Red Fort are buildings made of red sandstone. Question 2. Can you say how 10th May is an autumn day in South Africa? Answer. As South Africa is in the Southern Hemisphere, May falls in the autumn season. Thus 10th May is an autumn day. Question 3. At the beginning of his speech, Mandela mentions an extraordinary human disaster. What does he mean by this? What is the glorious human achievement he speaks of at the end? Answer. By an extraordinary human disaster Mandela means to state the practice of apartheid in South Africa. During this there was a racial segregation based on color and the blacks suffered a lot. They were not allowed to demand freedom or any right. Mandela himself did spend many years on infamous Robin Island as a prisoner where he was beaten mercilessly. He considered it as great glorious human achievement that a black person became the president of a country where the blacks were not even considered human beings and were treated badly. Question 4. What does Mandela thank the international leaders for? Answer. Mandela felt very privileged to welcome the international leaders at the swearing-in ceremony because not too long ago, the South Africans were considered outlaws. He thus thanks all of them for having come to witness the historical ceremony. This was a gesture of international recognition to a newly born free democratic nation and it could be considered as a common victory for justice peace and human dignity. Question 5. What ideals does Nelson Mandela set for the future of South Africa? Answer. Nelson Mandela set the ideals of liberating people from bondage of poverty, deprivation and suffering. He also set the ideal for a society where there would be no discrimination based on gender or racial origins. Question 6. What did the military generals do? How did their attitude change and why? Answer. The highest military generals of South African Defense Force saluted Mandela and pledged their loyalty which was of great significance as during apartheid era, they would have arrested him. The change in their attitude was because of struggle and sacrifices put in by many heroes of South Africa. This struggle not only ensured the freedom of a nation struggling with apartheid, Burr brought a change in mindsets of many. He believed that love can also be taught and human being is naturally inclined towards love rather than hate. Question 7. Why were two national anthems sung? Answer. One the auspicious occasion of the inauguration two national anthems, one by the whites and the other by the blacks symbolizing the equality of the blacks and the whites were sung. Question 8. How does Mandela describe the systems of government in his country? In the first decade, and in the final decade, 
of the 20th century? Answer. In the first decade of the century, the whites erected a system of racial domination against the blacks, thus creating the basis of one of the harshest and most inhumane societies the world had ever known. In the final decade of the 20th century, the previous system had been overturned and replaced by one which recognized rights and freedom of all people regardless of color of their skin. Question 9. What does courage mean to Mandela? Answer. For Mandela courage does not mean the absence of fear, but a victory over fear. According to him brave men need not be fearless but should be able to conquer fear. Question 10. Which does Mandela think is natural, to love or to hate? Answer. For Mandela, love comes more naturally to the human heart than hate. Thank hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back to our channel. Hamro Gyan Vigyan. Myself Potlu. Your friend. And Prakash friend. Please subscribe my channel, like it and share it to your maximum friends circle or needy friends through your WhatsApp, Facebook or any social media. We shall learn about two stories about flying. Written by Liam Zero Flaherty was an Irish novelist and short story writer. Summary and some important questions from this story. From Subject English. For Class 10 students. You must learn this story from your textbook. In this article, you will be reading two stories about flying summary which is present in two parts. The author of the part 1 titled His First Flight is Liam O'Harty, while the author of part 2 titled Black Aeroplane is Frederick Forsry. In the first part, the readers come to know about the younger bird seagull. The bird is very afraid to fly for the first time. It feels that its wing will not support while flying. The writer gives a beautiful narration of the story about how the bird overcomes this fear. In the second part, the writer narrates the story about a student who is returning back to England on a flight. The story describes the events that happen on the way and his narrow escape from death with the help of a mysterious aeroplane. Two stories about flying summary. The story of his first flight is based on a young seagull who is afraid to fly because of distrust on its wings. All his younger siblings can fly fearlessly despite their shorter wings. On the other hand, the young bird cannot gather the courage to trust his wings. He always becomes afraid when coming forward to the brink of the ledge and attempting to fly. His mother and father come around calling him and threatening him starve on the ledge unless he flies. Despite all the upbraiding and calling to him shrilly, he could not move. All day long he watches his parents fly with his siblings and teaching them how to skim the waves. One day, the whole family flies to a big plateau and on the opposite cliff, the seagull is sitting hungry. He begs his mother to bring him some food. His mother picks a piece of fish and flies across to him. Maddened by hunger, he jumped at the fish with a loud shout. He falls outward and downward into space and he can feel his wings cutting through the air. The next moment he is flying fearlessly and his siblings soaring and diving with him. The narrator of the story, Black Aeroplane is a pilot who elaborates on his misjudgment and how it creates problems. In the lesson, the pilot is flying from Paris to London and dreams about the holiday with his family. He is flying over a city, and thinks about the tasty breakfast after landing. After crossing Paris he gets the look of the dark clouds, signifying the upcoming storm. For the sake of safety, he should turn back to Paris but he decided otherwise. To fulfill his dream of a holiday, he risks the life of passengers and heads the plane into the storm. Everything gets dark and all the instruments stop working. He lost control of the plane and the hope of their survival becomes bleak. The very less amount of fuel is left and the pilot starts panicking in the situation. Suddenly he sees another plane, flying next to him through the storm. The pilot turns his plane to the north in order to follow the strange aeroplane. The pilot starts frightening again as the fuel is getting low. The anonymous pilot guides them out of the storm and disappears. After landing, the pilot asks about the other plane, 
but is left in shock to know that there was no other plane in the sky, except his. Conclusion of two stories about flying. The first part of the story teaches us that the inner strength of the person is always helpful in overcoming difficult situations, while the second part teaches us that we should not risk the lives of others to fulfill our dreams. Hello friends, some important questions from this lesson. Question 1. Why was the young seagull afraid to fly? Do you think all young birds are afraid to make their first flight, or are some birds more timid than others? Do you think a human baby also finds it a challenge to take its first step? Answer. The young seagull was afraid to fly because it was his first flight and he feared of falling and hurting himself. He thought that his wings would not support him while flying. Yes, it is natural that doing something for the first time is a bit challenging and fearful. All birds must be afraid to make their first flight. Similarly, a human baby is also afraid of taking the first step and find it challenging when he learns to crawl or stand up without support. Question 2. The sight of the food maddened him. What does this suggest? What compelled the young seagull to finally fly? Answer. The young seagull was very hungry. It was this hunger that ultimately compelled it to fly. Its hunger intensified when it saw its mother tearing at a piece of fish that lay at her feet. It cried to her, begging her to get some food. When its mother came towards it with food in her beak, it screamed with joy and anticipation. However, she stopped midway. It wondered why she did not come nearer. Not being able to resist or contraffit its hunger any longer, it dived at the food in its mother's beak. At that moment, his hunger overpowered his fear of the great expanse of sea beneath the cliff. Finally, this plunge was followed by the natural reaction of its body, I, to fly. Question 3. They were beckoning to him, calling shrilly why did the seagull's father and mother threaten him and cajole him to fly? Answer. Seagull's parents had tried everything but he was reluctant to fly due to fear of falling down. He looked at his brothers and sister, but wouldn't he make any efforts? Thoughts why the whole family had left him alone and threatened and cajoled him to come, but every effort went in vain. Question 4. Have you ever had a similar experience, where your parents encouraged you to do something that you were too scared to try? Discuss this in pairs or groups. Answer. Suggested answer yes, I had a similar experience while leaning to ride a bicycle in class Y. In my initial attempts, I fell down every time and developed a fear of cycling which was difficult to overcome. No amount of provoking and cajoling could let me try it again, but my father encouraged me to overcome the fear and helped me as he was adamant on my learning cycling. He took me on a mountaineer village and made me sit and asked me to put my hands on the handle and feet on the paddle. It sped down and I enjoyed it without fear which developed my confidence. Thus. I overcame my fear of cycling and started riding a cycle after a few practice. Question 5. In the case of a bird, flying, it seems a natural act, and a foregone conclusion that it should succeed. In the examples, you have given an answer to the previous question, was your success, guaranteed, or was it important for you to try, regardless of a possibility of failure? Answer. We face some problems in the initial stage while learning new skill. Due to the fear of failure, we hesitate to perform a task or to do something new. In case of the seagull his parents cajoled him to fly. In the example I have given in the answer of previous question, I was cajoled by my father to learn cycling. So, at that stage, I was to learn cycling as it was very important for me to overcome my fear. Yes. My success was guaranteed because if someone is determined to do something, then success is assured. Moreover as said, practice, makes a man perfect. Question 6. I'll take the risk. What is the risk? Why does the narrator take it? Answer. A huge storm was brewing up and the author was keen to reach his home to spend his holiday with his family. 
So, he decided to fly through the storm as he did not want to miss the chance to meet his family at breakfast. Thus he took the risk, even when the visibility was almost zero in the storm. Question 7. Describe the narrator's experience as he flew the aeroplane into the storm. Answer. As the pilot author entered the storm, his plane started jumping and twisting. He could not see anything outside the plane as it was black. When he looked at compass and other instruments they had stopped to function due to storm. It was a terrible and fearsome experience for him. The fuel tank was almost empty and he could not fly more than 10 minutes. Then he saw another black aeroplane by his side and the pilot of the plane signaled him to follow. It was a surprise for the narrator as the other black plane was having no light. He followed him without any choice and landed safely on the runway. Question 8. Why does the narrator say, I landed and was not sorry to walk away from the old Dakota? Answer. Siegel's parents had tried everything but he was reluctant to fly due to fear of falling down. He looked at his brothers and sister, but wouldn't he make any efforts? Thoughts why the whole family had left him alone and threatened and cajoled him to come, but every effort went in vain. Question 9. What made the woman in the control center look at the narrator strangely? Answer. The woman in the control center looked at the narrator strangely because the narrator asked him about the black aeroplane and she saw no one except the narrators in the sky during the storm. Even the radar showed only the narrator's plane that night in the sky. Question 10. Who do you think helped the narrator to reach safely? Discuss this among yourselves and give reasons for your answer. Answer. It is very difficult to say about the unknown pilot who helped the narrator. But probably it was the narrator himself that helped him to overcome the fear in the storm as no other plane was seen in the radar except the narrator's Dakota plane. In that fearsome situation, he might have been hallucinating. He himself was a good pilot and brave enough who helped himself land safely. Thank you. Please you comment in comment box or drop your queries in my WhatsApp number all hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back to our channel. Hamro Gyan Vigyan. Myself Potlu. Your friend. And Prakash friend. Please subscribe my channel, like it and share it to your maximum friends circle or needy friends through your WhatsApp, Facebook or any social media. We shall learn about. From the Diary of Anne Frank. Written by Anne Frank. Summary and some important questions from this article. From Subject English. For Class 10 students. You must learn this article from your textbook. In this article, you will be reading from the Diary of Anne Frank summary which is based on the background of World War II. This is an autobiography of a young girl, Anne Frank, who expresses her thought in a diary. Her father has gifted the diary on her 13th birthday, which she calls with the name of Kitty. Anne Frank is a Jewish girl who is hiding during World War II, in order to avoid the Nazis. She shares her experience and the story during her time of depression. From the Diary of Anne Frank Summary The author feels that it is strange and unusual for her to write a diary because it is the first time she is doing it. She feels that in the future, no one will read about a young girl's past experiences. But then, she puts these thoughts away and decides to write her thoughts. The author is feeling very lonely as she has no friends to talk to. She wants to give her need of friend, a shape, hence decides to name the diary as Kitty. The writer feels that the paper has more capacity to absorb thoughts rather than people who have low patience level. She has a good time with friends, but cannot share everything with them as they are not true friends. She refers to her father as the most lovable who presents her the diary on her 13th birthday. On June 20, 1942, she mentions how her class is nervous about their results. The author says that the only subject she is unsure about is mathematics. She and her friend, Guy are trying to stop the students from making noise, but to no avail. According to the author, 
about the quarter of the class should not pass as they do not participate in any activities. Anne recalls how the maths professor is constantly irritated by her talkativeness. While talking in his classes, he gives her extra homework as punishment. The first punishment is to write an essay on Chatterbox, which the author thinks as weird. She imagines about the topic and decides to present concrete arguments in support of talking. She writes that she will try to better herself, but cannot eliminate talking completely. The professor finds it amusing but alerts another topic after she did not change her nature. The topic is an incorrigible shorter box which refers to a habit that is difficult to change. After keeping an eye on her, the professor gives her another topic, quack, 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 said Mistress Chatterbox, as a punishment. She runs out of thought after writing two times on a similar topic. She decides to write her third topic in the form of a poem, and writes the satire and luckily the professor takes it lightly. The professor recites the entire poem in front of the class and the author talked uninterruptedly after this. Conclusion of From the Diary of Anne Frank In the story From the Diary of Anne Frank, we can conclude that a young student needs to talk and feel joyous in order to stay mentally fit. Some important questions from this article. Question 1. What makes writing in a diary a strange experience for Anne Frank? Answer. Writing in a diary was a strange experience for Anne Frank as she never had a diary and it was a gift on her 13th birthday. She considered it her best friend on which she relied the most and with whom she shared all her ups and downs. Question 2. Why does Anne want to keep a diary? Answer. Anne always feels lonely and distressed so to get off all the burden and pain she wants to keep a diary in which she finds a true friend as she has hardly any friends whom she could confide in. Question 3. Why did Anne think she could confide more in her diary than in people? Answer. Anne felt that paper had more patience than people to listen to her plight. So, it was easier for her to write all kind of thoughts which she had in her mind. Her personal diary was not meant for anyone else to read. Question 4. Why does Anne provide a brief sketch of her life? Answer. By providing the brief sketch of her life, Anne wants to give an overview of her family, relatives, and her age. This helps the reader to develop a connection with the author. Question 5. What tells you that Anne loved her grandmother? Answer. Anne lived with her grandmother for some time, while her parents, set it down in Holland. She was very close to her grandmother. She writes in her diary no one knows how often I think of her and still love her. On her 13th birthday by lighting up one candle for grandmother, she shows her love for her. Question 6. Why was Mr. Teasing annoyed with Anne? What did he ask her to do? Answer. Mr. Teasing was annoyed with Anne because she was very talkative. He punished her by giving her extra homework to write essays to keep her silent and the topics always related to her nature. Question 7. How did Anne justify her being a chatterbox in her essay? Answer. Anne justified her being a chatterbox in her essay by explaining that it is due to her mother who was also very talkative, and nobody could do anything about their inherited traits. Question 8. Do you think Mr. Keezing was a strict teacher? Answer. No, Mr. Keezing was not a bad or strict teacher because a teacher did something for the welfare of his students. Any teacher would be annoyed if children keep on talking in the class. Secondly, if he had been strict he would not have laughed at Anne's funny arguments. Question 9. What made Mr. Keezing allow Anne to talk in class? Answer. Anne's last essay in the form of a poem showed Mr. Keezing the lighter side of a naughty child. It helped bridge the generation gap between the teacher and the student. Question 10. Was Anne right, when she said that the world would not be interested in the musings of a 13-year-old girl? Answer. Yes, Anne was right, when she said so because most of the people, don't they want to give importance to a child's perspective toward the world? because they are too immature for the world. 
but Anne Frank has become one of the most discussed of all Holocaust victims. Her diary has been translated into many languages. Question 11. There are some examples of diary or journal entries in the before you read section. Compare these with what Anne writes in her diary. What language was the diary originally written in? In what way is Anne's diary different? Answer. Anne's diary was entirely different from most of the examples given before the text. It was somewhere closer to the memoir, in which the name of Raj Kapoor has been mentioned. It was originally written in Dutch. It has informal tone which exudes the careful nature of a teenager. Thank you. Good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back to our channel. Hamro Gyan Vigyan. Myself Potlu. Please subscribe my channel, like it and share it to your maximum friends circle or needy friends through your WhatsApp, Facebook or any social media. We shall learn about. Glimpses of India. By Lucio Rodriguez, Lokesh Abral and Arup Kumar Datta respectively. Summary and some important questions from this article. From Subject English. For Class 10 Students. You must learn this article from your textbook. Glimpses of India Summary. A baker from Goa is a story that relates to the time when there was Portuguese rule in Goa. The story is of a baker living in a Gon village. During those times people, ate loaves of bread. These were made in big furnaces. The bakers known as pudders would come to sell these bread in the street and would make a jingle sound with the bamboo. Although, nowadays we may not see these loaves, but may sometimes see the furnaces and some bakers carrying on the traditional business of their forefathers. The author remembers the coming of the baker, twice a day during his childhood days. He was the author's friend and guide. The maid servants in the author's house would buy loaves of bread, which they ate with tea. During those days, bread was an important part of any occasion, especially the sweet bread, ball. Also, the baker had a peculiar dress, kabai. It was a single piece frock that would reach up to knees. Baking was a profitable business at that time. Kurg is a story describing the Kurg or Kodagu the smallest district of Karnataka. The author describes Kurg as a heavenly place that lies between Mangalore and Mysore. It is certainly God's abode as it has evergreen forests, spices and coffee plantations. From September to March, the weather is good here, and thus many tourists come to visit the place. The air here has the coffee aroma in it. There's a famous story about the Greek or Arabic descent of the Kurd people that a part of Alexander's army had to settle here, as it was, not possible for them to return. They thus settled here, and married with the locals. We may find people of Kurd wear kapia, a long black coat similar to the kufia that Arabs wear. People of Kurd are also very brave. The Kurd regiment of Indian army is one of the most significant regiments. Also, our first army, Chief, General Charyappa hails from Kurg. The forests and hills of Kurg provide a major source of water to the river Kaveri. Also, Mahasir, the largest freshwater fish is found in these waters. From the top of the Brahmagiri hills, we can see the complete view of Kurg. Also, Buddhists monks live in Bailakuppe in the island of Nisargadhama near Kurg. The last story T from Assam starts with two friends, Rajveer and Pranjal traveling to Assam. On their way, they buy the tea from a roadside vendor. While sipping the tea, Rajveer tells Pranjal that people drink over 800 million cups of tea throughout the world, in a day. While Rajveer is looking at the beautiful and serene scenery, Pranjal is busy, reading detective book. There were tea bushes, all over as far as one could see. They also saw a building which was a tea garden. Assam has the largest tea plantations and no one knows who discovered the tea for the first time. But, there are many legends associated with it. According to a Chinese legend, a few branches of tea fell accidentally in the boiled hot water. The emperor liked the delicious flavor. This is how it came into being. As per an Indian legend, Buddhist monk, Badidharma cut off his eyelids as to avoid sleep during meditation. 
About 10 tea plants grow out of these and thus, they banish, sleep, when put in hot water and drunk. Both of them got down at Mariani Junction and went to the Kayabari tea estate. There they saw women plucking tea leaves. Pranjal's father had come to receive them, there, and said that he knew a lot about tea plantations. Rajveer said some important questions from this article. Question 1. What are the elders in Goa nostalgic about? Answer. The elders in Goa are nostalgic about the good old Portuguese days and their love of bread and loaves. The writer says that the eaters of loaves have left, but the makers still exist. Question 2. Is bread making still popular in Goa? How do you know? Answer. Yes, bread making is still popular in Goa. This is very clear from the narrator's statement that the eaters have gone away leaving the makers behind. There are mixers, molders and the ones who bake the loaves. The time tested furnaces still exist there. Question 3. What is the baker called? Answer. The baker is called a pader in Goa. Question 4. When would the baker come every day? Why did the children run to meet him? Answer. The baker would come twice a day once early in the morning and the second time, when he returned after selling his stuff. The children would run to meet him as they wanted to have bread bangles. Question 5. What did the bakers wear? 1. In the Portuguese days. 2. When the author was young. Answer. 1. The bakers were usually dressed up in a peculiar dress called cowboy. It was a single piece long frock, reaching down to the knees. 2. During his childhood days, the author saw the bakers wearing a shirt and trousers which were shorter than full length, ones and longer than half pants. Question 6. Who invites the comment he is dressed like a pader why? Answer. Any person who is wearing a half pant which reaches just below the knees invites this comment. This is because the baker, known as a pader, used to dress like that. Question 7. Where were the monthly accounts of the baker recorded? Answer. Monthly accounts of the baker were recorded on some wall in the house with a pencil. Question 8. What does a jackfruit-like appearance mean? Answer. It means having a plump physique, like a jackfruit. Question 9. Where is Kud? Answer. Kud or Kodagu is the smallest district of Karnataka. It is situated midway between Mysore and the Sebastal town of Mangalore. Question 10. What is the story about the Kodavu people's descent? Answer. The fiercely independent people of Kurg are descendants of Greeks or Arabs. A section of Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here, only when they were unable to return to their country. These people married among the locals. This is the story about the descent of Kodavu people. Th Hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back to our channel. Hamro Gyan Vigyan. Myself Potlu. Your friend. And Prakash friend. Please subscribe my channel, like it and share it to your maximum friends circle or needy friends through your WhatsApp, Facebook or any social media. We shall learn about. Mijbil, the author. Gavin Maxwell is the author of the prose named Mijbil, the author. The author describes how his life changed after keeping an author as a pet as he lost his first pet dog. Summary and some important questions from this article. From Subject English. For Class 10 students. You must learn this article from your textbook. Mijbil, the author summary in English. The story starts with the writer traveling to Basra along with his Paul. At some point in their journey, the author expresses his choice to domesticate an author because after he had lost his pet dog, he feels lonely. His buddy advised that he should get one from the marshes along river Tigris in Iraq. As they reached the destination, they discovered that only the friend's mail had arrived. After some days, the buddy left whilst the narrator is still waiting to receive his mail. After receiving it, he went to his room to discover an otter introduced to him in a sack.
accompanied by the aid of Arabs with a message. He named the otter Mijbil, and in short form Mij. It took some time for Mij to get familiar with his surroundings. Mij cherished playing with water and learned to open the faucet himself. The time is passing smoothly in Basra, however, now it was time to go back to London. As British Airlines did not permit animals, so, he had to book some other flight that allowed Mij on a flight, but in a box. The narrator put him in a box an hour before the flight in and left for having a meal. As he comes back, he found that box was still and Mij had created holes and destroyed the internal lining. As a result, blood was coming out of the holes. He became scared and rushed to the airport as it's only 10 minutes left for the flight to take off. He cleaned the box and reached the airport on time. Also, he explained the whole incident to the air hostess who suggested him to keep the container on his lap. Gavin was thankful for her kindness towards him. As soon as he opened the container, the otter leapt out and disappeared thereby developing chaos in flight. Passengers had been fearful. The air hostess had taken him again to Gavin and eventually, they reached London. Midge was fond of ping pong balls and marbles. He even developed recreation with the narrator's broken suitcase. The narrator took him to walk and the people of London had wild guesses about the animal. A few people think him to be an infant seal, squirrel, or maybe a hippo. The utmost shocking response came from a laborer digging the hole who asked the author, what's that purported to be? Conclusion of Midgebill, the author. The story explains the bond of the author and his pet otter, and the series of incidences happened during their journey to London. Hello friend, some important questions from this article. Question 1. What experiment did Maxwell think Camusphere now would be suitable for? Answer. The writer had gone to southern Iraq in the year 1956. He took a fancy to the idea that instead of keeping a dog as a pet, he would go for an otter. Camus Fierna was surrounded by water, so it would be an eminently suitable spot for this experiment. Question 2. Why does he go to Basra? How long does he wait there, and why? Answer. The writer went to Basra to collect and answer his mail from Europe. He had to wait there for five days as his mail did not arrive. Question 3. How does he get the otter? Does he like it? Pick out the words that tell you this. Answer. His friend bought the otter for him and sent it to the place where he was staying. The author liked it. This is seen in the second night, Midgebill came onto my bed in the small hours and remained asleep in the crook of my knees. I made a body belt for him. Question 4. Why was the otter named Maxwell's otter? Answer. The otter was named by zoologists as Leutrogale per Specialata Maxwelli. Hence, it was called Maxwell's otter in short. Question 5. Take the right answer. In the beginning, the otter was 1. Aloof and indifferent. 2. Friendly. 3. Hostile. Answer. What happened when Maxwell took Midgebill to the bathroom? What did it do two days after that? In the beginning, the otter was aloof and indifferent. Question 6. What happened when Maxwell took Midgebill to the bathroom? What did it do two days after that? Answer. When the author first took Midgebill to the bathroom, the otter first went wild with joy in the water. He plunged and rolled in it. He jumped up and down the length of the bathtub. He made enough slash and splash. After two days, the otter suddenly disappeared and went to the bathroom to play in the water and opened the tap on his own. Question 7. How was Midgebill transported to England? Answer. Midgebill was packed in a box as the airlines had directed the author. As British Airlines did not allow pets on board, the author had to book a ticket on a different airline from Iraq to Paris and then Paris to London. Question 8. What did Midge do to the box? Answer. The box was lined with a metal sheet. Midge didn't feel comfortable in the box and tried to escape. In his attempt to escape, 
Mittar into the metal lining of the box and in the process hurt himself. Question 9. Why did Maxwell put the otter back in the box? How do you think he felt when he did this? Answer. As there was no other way to carry Mitch to London, Maxwell put in the box again. He must have felt pity on the way the otter hurt himself. Moreover, he must be worried as well. Question 10. Why does Maxwell say the Aerostess was the very queen of her kind? Answer. The Aerostess was very sympathetic after listening to Maxwell's story. She understood how he might be feeling and then gave him permission to take the otter out of the box. Due to all this, Maxwell referred her as the very queen of her kind. Question 11. What happened when the box was opened? Answer. As soon as the box was opened, Midge ran out. Then it ran all over the place carrying all the passengers. It created a clause, and most of the people in the plane got scared. Question 12. What game had Midge invented? Answer. Midge invented a game of playing with the ball in a unique way. One of the author's suitcase was damaged and had a slope on the top part. Midge would put the ball on the high end and run to catch it as it slided to the lower end. Question 13. What group of animals do otters belong to? Answer. Otters belong to a comparatively small group of animals called mustelines. The other animals of this group are badger, mongoose, weasel, stoat, mink and others. Question 14. What guesses did the Londoners make about what Midge was? Answer. As otters are not found in England so Londoners made the wildest possible guesses about Midge. Their guesses ranged from a baby seal, a squirrel, a hippo to a brontosaurus. Thank you. Some important hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back to our channel. Hamro Gyan Vigyan. Myself Potlu. Your friend. And Prakash friend. Please subscribe my channel, like it and share it to your maximum friends circle or needy friends through your WhatsApp, Facebook or any social media. We shall learn about. Madam Rides the Bus. Written by author Wally Cannon. Summary and some important questions from this article. From Subject English. For Class 10 Students. You must learn this article from your textbook. In this story, the author is trying to present the world as seen from a child's perspective. The main character of this story is an 8-year-old girl Wally who lives near a bus stop in a village. Wally develops the desire to enjoy a ride on the bus. For this purpose, she needs to reduce her expenses so that she can save enough money for the two-way fire. While on her journey, Wally does not want anybody's help and wants to feel independent. She enjoys every bit of her journey to the town. But she is careful enough not to get off the bus in the unknown localities. On her return journey, a sad accident spoils her mood but she just keeps it to herself. Thus she wants to explore more and wishes to go for another ride in the future. Madam Rides the Bus Summary This is a sensitive story of a Tamil girl Walia Mai or Walli who is only 8 years old. She was curious to know about the outside world. Also, she did not have friends to play. So she keeps standing inside the doorway of her residence and watch people in the street. This was her favorite pastime. However, she was always mesmerized by the bus journey. There traveled a bus between her village and the closest city. She started collecting information about the timings of the bus from her neighbors. The bus travels to the town near her village, which was approximately 6 miles from her village. The fare was 30 paise for one way. So, Wally started saving money for the bus fare. She planned to travel in the afternoon when her mother was having her nap. Wally was standing on the roadside, waiting for the bus. As the bus came she told the conductor she wants to go to town. The conductor was a jovial person. He called her madam and showed her the seat. The bus was new and painted in green and white color stripes. The bus was comfortable and seats were luxurious. On her journey, she enjoyed watching mountains, green fields, and palm trees grassland. 
she was experiencing it all for the first time by her own eyes. On her way to the town, she saw a young cow that came in front of the bus while crossing the road. The driver blew the whistle and the cow crossed by. All this is very fascinating for Wally. It was like a dream come true for her. She was watching everything but the outside landscape was her prime focus. After some time, the bus reached the final destination, and all the passengers got down. The conductor asked her to get down, but she told that she was there for the bus ride. The conductor smiled listening to her reply. Wally remained on the bus and had taken a return ticket from the conductor. The bus started and on her way, back home, she saw the same cow dead by the roadside. This made her heart cry. She thus became sad and tried to understand the meaning of life and death in her own terms. She came back home, but did not share a word about the journey with her family. Conclusion of Madam Rides the Bus The story illustrates the desire of a small girl, and how a bad incident makes her understand the matters of life and death. Some important questions from this article. Question 1. What was Wally's favorite pastime? Answer. Wally's favorite pastime was standing in the front doorway of her house, and looking at the street outside. Question 2. What was the source of unending joy for Wally? What was her strongest desire? Answer. The sight of the bus that traveled between her village, and the nearest town, filled each time with a new set of passengers, was a source of unending joy for Wally. Her strongest desire, was to ride the bus. Question 3. What did Wally find out about the bus journey? How did she find these details? Answer. Wally found out that the bus journey to the town took 45 minutes, and the one-way fare costed 30 paisa. She listened carefully to the conversations between her neighbors and people who regularly used the bus and asked a few discreet questions, here, and there. This way she picked up various small details about the bus journey. Question 4. What do you think Wally was planning to do? Answer. Wally was planning to go to the town, and then return back by the same bus. The fare was 30 pesa one way and the ride took 45 minutes. In this way, she planned that she would be back by 2.45 p.m., if yes, Hichif took the bus at 1 o'clock p.m. Question 5. Why does the conductor call Wally Madam? Answer. The conductor called Wally Madam because she behaved like a woman. She declined his help and was very quick in her answers to the conductor's questions. This made the conductor call him Madam. Question 6. Why does Wally stand up on the seat? Or, what does she see now? Answer. Wally wanted to look outside the bus. She found her view blocked by the canvas blind that covered the lower part of the window. In order to have a better view she stood up on the seat and peered over the blind. She saw a canal, palm trees, grassland, mountains, green fields, and the sky. Question 7. What does Wally tell the elderly man, when he calls her a child? Answer. Wally replied that there was nobody in the bus who was a child. She told her that she had paid her fare of 30 pesa like. Question 8. Why didn't Wally want to make friends with the elderly woman? Answer. Wally did not want it to make friends with the elderly woman because she looked quite repulsive. She had big ear holes and was wearing ugly earrings. Apart from this, she was chewing beetle, and her mouth was also filled with beetle juice. Question 9. How did Wally save money for her first journey backslash was it easy for her? Answer. Wally had very painstakingly saved every stray coins that came her way by resisting every temptation to buy peppermints, toys, balloons, etc. It had been very difficult for her. Even at the village fire she resisted the temptation to be on the merry-go-round. Thus, she had been able to save 60 pesa for her first bus journey. Question 10. What did Wally see on her way that made her laugh? Answer. Wally saw a young cow, tail high in the air running very, fast right in the middle of the road in front of the bus. The driver sounded his horn again, 
and again, so that the cow moves away. But the more he honked, the more frightened the animal became and faster it galloped. This all seemed very funny to Wally and she laughed and laughed till there were tears in her eyes. Question 11. Why didn't she get off the bus at the bus station? Answer. Wally had planned that she only wanted to ride on the bus. She would spend 30 pesos on her fare, go to the town, and then come back by the same bus before her mother woke up. She didn't want time or money to go to see the town. Question 12. Why didn't Wally want go to the stall have a drink? What does this tell you about her? Answer. Wally had saved only 60 pesos for the trip. She didn't want to waste any money on the as she had to come back by the same bus at any cost. So, when the conductor suggested her to get down and have a drink she refused. He offered bring one for her but she still refused. This I that she was a well-mannered girl. Thank you, some im hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back to our channel. Hamro Gyan Vigyan. Myself Potlu. Your friend. And Prakash friend. Please subscribe my channel, like it and share it to your maximum friends circle or needy friends through your WhatsApp, Facebook or any social media. We shall learn about. The Sermayon at Ben Ayers. Written by Betty Rensha. Summary and some important questions from this article. From Subject English. For class 10 students. You must learn this article from your textbook. The Sarmayan at Benares Summary. Gautama Buddha was born in a North Indian royal family. He was born as a prince. Moreover, his childhood name was Siddhartha Gautama. He was sent to a faraway place to study Hindu sacred scriptures at the age of 12. Then, upon returning after four years, he got married to a princess. Soon, they both were blessed with a son. Then, they continued to live the royal life for about 10 years. The royals were shielded from the unpleasant experiences of the world. However, one day, on his way to hunt, the prince met a sick man, an aged man, a funeral procession and a monk who was begging for. Such experiences acted as an eye-opener for him hence, he left all the royalty behind to seek a higher sense of spiritual knowledge. Then, when he attained salvation, he began preaching. His first sermon given in the city of Ben Ayers. There was a lady whose name was Kisa Gotamai whose son has died. She was suffering from unending pain. Thus, she went from house to house looking for medicine to make her son alive. People thought that the lady has lost her senses. However, one day, she met a man who directed her towards Lord Buddha. He felt that Buddha could possibly have a solution for her problem. Then, Buddha asked her to look for mustard seeds and the seeds must be procured from a house, where there had been no death. Filled with hope, Kisa Gotamai once again went on, a search from house to house, but she could not find mustard seeds from a house according to Buddha's condition. Thus, she was disheartened and sat at the edge of the road where she realized how selfish, she had been. She realized the fact that men are mortal. Also, no one could escape the cycle of life. This was the only fact that Buddha wanted her to understand. According to Lord Buddha, feelings of grief and sorrow increases man's pain and suffering. It serves no other purpose. Moreover, it deteriorates the health. Thus, a wise person who is fully aware of nature's functioning must not grieve at something bound to happen. This is the only way in which he can be happy and blessed. Conclusion of the Sarmayan at Ben Ayers. The first Sarmayan of Lord Buddha at Ben Ayers was the holiest. It ended the suffering of a lady who had lost her son. She accepted the truth and thus freed from some important questions from this article. Question 1. When her son dies, Kisa Gotamai goes from house to house. What does she ask for? Does she get it? Why not? Answer. After the death of her only son, Kisa Gotamai was overcome with grief. She carried the dead body of her son in her arms and went from door to door asking for medicine to cure her child, 
but nobody could provide any medicine. For there is no such medicine available, which can bring a dead person back to life. Question 2. Kisa Gotamai again goes from house to house after she speaks with the Buddha. What does she ask for? Does she get it? Why not? Answer. Gautama Buddha asks Kisa to bring a handful of mustard seeds from a house where death had never knocked at the door. Kisa Gotamai went from door to door, but couldn't he find a single house where death had not taken a beloved away. She could not get it as death is inheritable and anyone who is born is bound to die one day. Question 3. What does Kisa Gotamai understand the second time that she failed to understand the first time? Was this what Buddha wanted her to understand? Answer. After failing to procure a handful of mustard seeds from a house where death had never knocked at the door, she sat down by the roadside feeling helpless. She saw the lights of the city that flickered, and were extinguished. At last, it was darkness everywhere. She realized that death was common to all and she was being selfish in her grief. Yes, this is what Buddha wanted her to understand, that everyone who is born has to die one day. Question 4. Why do you think Kisa Gotamai understood this only the second time? In what way did Buddha change her understanding? Answer. Earlier, she could see only her grief. When she went from door to door the second time, she understood that everyone was dealing, though with the loss of a beloved one. There was not a single house in the town, where death had not taken a father, a mother, a sister, a brother, son or a daughter. Everyone, at some point or the other, have experienced the death of their loved ones. Gautama Buddha helped her to understand all this, as he told her to bring a handful of mustard seeds from a house where death had never knocked at the door. This way she got aware that death is common to all human beings. Question 5. How do you usually understand the idea of selfishness? Do you agree with Kisa Gotamai that she was being selfish in her grief? Answer. A selfish person is one who only thinks about himself or herself, and to some extent, Kisa Gotamai was being selfish because, we are humans and it is natural for us to die. We do not easily accept the death of our loved ones. Same has happened with Kisa Gotamai. As it was her only child, she did not want him to die finally went to Buddha to ask for help. Thank you, hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back to our channel. Hamro Gyan Vigyan. Myself Potlu. Your friend. And Prakash friend. Please subscribe my channel, like it and share it to your maximum friends circle or needy friends through your WhatsApp, Facebook or any social media. We shall learn about. One play. Topic. The Proposal. Written by the Russian story writer and dramatist Chekhov in 1880-889. Summary and some important questions from this play. From Subject English. For Class 10 Students. You must learn this play from your textbook. It is a one-act play written by the Russian story writer and dramatist Chekhov in 1880-889. The play is about the tendency of rich families to hunt ties with other wealthy families, to extend their estates by encouraging marriages, that observe economic sense. Ivan Lumov, a wealthy neighbor of Stepan Chabukov, also wealthy, who seeks the hand of Chabukov's 25-year-old daughter, Natalia. All three are argumentative, and they argue over petty issues. The proposal is on the verge of losing in the middle of all this quarreling. But economic common sense ensures that the proposal is formed, in any case although the quarreling perhaps continues. The Proposal Summary The curtain rises with Lumo entering his neighbor Chabukov's house in neatly dressed up attire. Chabukov in great curiosity to see him well dressed and asks him the occasion. Lumov reveals that he had come for a desire. Chabukov assumes that he must have come to ask for money, which he does not want to return. After knowing that Lumov had come to invite Chabulov's daughter, Natalia's hand in marriage, Chabukov leaves to call Natalia. 
Lumo is a 35 years old gentleman who suffers from palpitations and gets upset very easily. He thinks it's the right age for him to marry and is happy that he is choosing Natalia. He believes Natalia is average looking and an honest caretaker. On Natalia's arrival, Lumo initiates the conversation about the cordial terms of both the families. While continuing to speak about his land, he somehow mentions Oxen Meadows which earlier was a disputed property, but is now his. Natalia is in the perception that Oxen Meadows belong to her family. Both enter into a heated discussion and act childishly and Chabukov's entry made it more heated. They shout and scream while Lumov suffers from extreme palpitation and a numb foot. They throw Lumov out of the house and continue abusing him. While defaming him, Chabukov accidentally reveals that he had a wedding proposal for Natalia which surprises Natalia, and she suddenly regrets sending him out. She tells her father to bring him back and Chabukov bains himself for being the father of a young daughter. When Lumov returns, Natalia tries to deviate the topic by talking about shooting. Little later they enter into a debate on their dogs. Natalia strongly believes that her dog Squeezer is better in comparison to Lumov's guess. They continue arguing when Chabukov enters the scene only to form things worse again. Everyone gets hyper and Lumo finally falls because of palpitations. Even then, the cursing continues when suddenly Natalia notices that he's unconscious. As they find him unable to drink water, declare him dead. After a while Lumo moves a bit, they give him some water to drink and Chabukov forcefully hands over Natalia's hands to him, gives his blessings, and asks them to kiss. After regaining his senses, he expresses his excitement and kisses Natalia's hands. Natalia again keeps convincing him that Squeezer is better than Guess, but Lumov, being adamant refuses to accept this and the quarreling continues. Conclusion of the Proposal The drama displays the greed of rich families to marry their children into other wealthy families with the aim of enhancing their wealth. Hello, some important questions from this play. Question 1. What does Chabukov at first suspect that Lumov has come for? Is he sincere, when he later says and I've always loved you, my angel, as if you were my own son? Find reasons for your answer from the play. Answer. At first Chabukov suspected that Lumov had come to borrow money as he was in his evening dress. He was not sincere, when he told Lumov that he had always loved him and that he was like his own son, because he had decided to, not give any money to Lumov. It was only when Lumov asked for his daughter's hand in marriage that his attitude changed, and he rushed out to call his daughter, Natalia. Question 2. Chabukov says of Natalia. As if she won't consent. She's in love, Egad, she's like a lovesick cat. Would you agree? Find reasons for your answer. Answer. Yes, Natalia is in love. This is clear by the way she behaves when she gets to know that Lumov came to propose to her. She starts weeping and asks her father to bring Lumov at once. Thank you. Some